So after I finish a project or two, I like to stop what I'm doing before I start the next project and do any repairs, clean up, and that sort of thing. So I got a fresh start, make sure everything's good working order. And today I'm gonna to be working on the flat platens on my grinder, and specifically the glass platen on this grinder. This is a ceramic glass platen. I dropped it and broke it, and then it's got worse, so it needs to be changed. I've had to do that a couple times over the years, but this grinder here is over 30 years old, and that's not too bad. And you may ask yourself, why do we use a glass platen? Well, there's a few reasons, and we'll talk about that as we go along. So let's get started. Get this thing off of here. Now what you have to realize here, these grinders are old, and the way they did platens back then, basically a piece of angle iron. This is the way it came, minus what you see right here. And I put a thicker plate on the front to help as a heat sink, and I had it surface ground, that sort of thing, and then put the glass over that. Ceramic glass really does a good job of dissipating heat, and it does not wear. That's one of the benefits of a glass platen. Very hard, it's not gonna wear. You can't do any hogging of material with it, because you will tear it up. Just like any platen, you'll get build up on it from your belt, kind of gets hard and that'll cause divots in your blade or whatever you're grinding, you'll have to clean them. But your platen needs to be very flat before you put your glass platen on there. We'll cover all of that once I get this one off. So let's go over and see if we can get the glass off of this one. So I got it chucked up here in the vise. You wanna make sure when you're working with glass or anything like that, heating it up, wear eye protection because it stuff could pop right in your eyes. It's gonna be getting hot and I don't want anything like that to happen, so just make sure you fool with this stuff, you do that. Now one thing about this, this is a high temperature glass, it's ceramic glass. You can't use regular glass for a platen like that, it gets too hot and it'll shatter. But you can find this stuff online, you can get it from a local fireplace dealer called something like Pyro Glass or Fireplace Glass, something like that. There's a few knife dealers online that sell them. You can even get them cut to your specific size of platen. So this one's a two by nine inch piece of glass. It's a quarter inch thick. I recommend at least quarter inch thick. If you get too thin, I think you're gonna be running into problems. So we're gonna go ahead and heat it up to about four or 500 degrees to get that epoxy that's underneath it to turn loose. And I'm just gonna use a regular torch. Use whatever you got to heat it up. And I'm just gonna get it underneath here and heat it up. It's gonna take a minute. That's a pretty good sized piece of steel in between the original platen and the glass plate. So it'll take a minute to get it up to that four or 500 degrees. 450 to 500 is when that epoxy will start loosening up. I don't think you'll ever have to worry about getting your platen this hot while you're grinding. If you do, uh, I think you're doing something wrong. Let's see if that's hot enough. Take a screwdriver. Well, that was easy enough. It's very hot, so be careful with it. That's why I have this glove on. And it's off. All right, we'll let this cool and we'll clean it up. Show you the next step. All right, I got all of that old glue cleaned off. I used a 220 grit sandpaper and then come back with a 60 grit and roughed it up real well. You want it deep scratches so that that glue will have something to adhere to. Now, ideally you want this as flat as you can get it, surface ground in particular. I originally surface ground this piece before the glass platen was on there. And, and I was using it as my platen. That's why there's a little wear spot in there. You really need to get that out of there because if you got a dip in there and it's underneath that glass, you could have a crack there. I'm taking shortcut and I'm gonna epoxy it and let that epoxy fill in there. That's just me. You really wanna get this thing flat as you can get it. If I were to take it to my surface grinder, I'd have to take this tab off, which is very important. It's a little tab sticks up for the glass to sit on, you wanna have that. 
because your belt's pulling down here. You want that glass sitting on that shelf. That's just some extra support for that glass platen. You got your epoxy and that support. So that's why I'm not gonna go surface grinding. I'm gonna let that epoxy fill in there. I'm not gonna squeeze it all out. I just want it to fill in that little low spot. So right now I'm gonna clean it up with some acetone and get ready to epoxy the glass platen. It's still kind of warm, but it's all right. Now I'll get the glass platen and clean it up the same way and we'll get some epoxy and get this thing set. All right, with everything cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some epoxy. I use a 30 minute cure. This is just some from Pops. They don't sponsor me, but I use it on my knives and I use it on these. Uh, something like G-Flex, anything like that should work. I like the long cure stuff, so I have time to work with it. And it does a great job. I have to wear gloves doing this. If I don't, it's like never sees. If you ever work with never sees, you'll know what I'm talking about. You get one spot on you, it's gonna be all over your living room, on top of your roof, everywhere when you get done. Inside your shoes. So I want it to have a good even coat. I wipe up the excess. I don't care about run out. I don't wanna squeeze it all out either, but. All right, here's our glass, our new piece. Just gonna set it on there. Let that stuff get everywhere. If you notice it's got a little overhang, that won't hurt you. This is a pre-cut piece. This particular piece came from hightemptools.com. They don't sponsor me either, but I'll leave a link in the description and you can get pre-cut ones for your project. I'm just going to take a clamp. Of course, I'm getting glue everywhere. Like I knew I would. And make sure it's on there even. That should do it. I'll just let it cure. I let it cure for at least 24 hours. I got a good even coat all through there. So ought to be good to go. While that's drying, we're going to be working on the other platen. Okay, on this platen, what I want to do is change out the wear plate. Now, like modern grinders, there's a couple holes back here that thread into a platen that you can unbolt and replace it. I don't have that option here. I could do the same thing, drill out, and then tap and drill a plate to put over this for my platen. But it's easy for me to just take the old one off, grind the small tacks that I have on there, and replace it. So... I'll take and cut out a piece of 316L stainless. It has pretty good wear resistance. And I will tack it on at the top and bottom and it'll be ready to go. Pretty simple and quick. You wanna make sure that your platen is flat. And you can see here where this piece is worn, what I call a wear plate, is worn down from grinding. And that'll cause problems with keeping parts square and that sort of thing. So occasionally I replace them. And it's quick and simple, easy to do.
So I wanted to mention one other platen that I use to you, and it is a real game changer if you're doing big wide bevels and wide grinds like on chef's knife or Siberian chef's knives, that sort of thing. And that is the leather platen. It is nine ounce leather on the top of a hard felt. Can't remember where I got the felt, but I bought a sheet of it years ago and I've made a couple of these. But this really helps for those wide bevels. If you get some problems going on there, you can really blend all of that out. This is, has a little give to it, a little forgiving. So when you're grinding, you don't have any hard gouges or cuts. You can really blend things out with it. Really nice to have the leather platen. So with a glass platen, you want to make sure you don't do any rough grinding, any hard grinding, profiling, that sort of thing. Use it strictly for cutting bevels. If you get down on it too hard, you're going to break the glass. Um, you'll overheat it and that sort of thing. It's a high temperature glass. It'll take a lot of punishment and it's only a thicker plate as you saw I put there. So it dissipates the heat very well. It doesn't get hot. But heavy, hard grinding with ruining them, that's the problems people have had with them why they don't like them. But I have really liked them. I've used them for years. A lot of people do. You don't have to worry about the glass eroding away. It's never going to move. So you don't have the problems that you have with traditional platens where you have wear and divots and that sort of thing. If you got any questions about changing a glass platen or using a glass platen, just leave them down in the comments. I hope you got something out of this. A few people have asked me about it. So I thought I would show how I replace one. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.